Hello and welcome back, and that is right, there's a real problem of brewing for some users when it comes to their hard drives. Right now, the TLDR, if you do have hard drives at 12, 14, 16 or 18 TB capacity, pretty much exclusively XOS at the moment, although other drives have been highlighted. If you've purchased drives within the last 12 months, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you check out uh, the power usage and hours on those drives. Now, why is this? Well, uh, according to Heis or Heis, uh, a German news outlet that have been covering this the start of 2025 mostly but really spearheaded on the 7th of February it seems like a lot of these drives that have been sold via numerous resellers and e-commerce websites have been listed as new when in fact they weren't new and recent reports uh, and analysis have shown that these were almost certainly drives that were utilized in chia farming do you remember that um, a cryptocurrency a few years back there when it was largely based on storage uh, rather than GPUs. Well, afterwards when that coin kind of game over uh, for the most part until it bounces back, a lot of these drives are now being resold into the market. And although a lot of German and indeed Japanese uh, and um, Australian based and many other European outlets have been highlighted, it seems predominantly this has impacted the German uh, distribution there. We'll talk a little bit more about distribution later in the video we're going to talk about the tools you can use to verify the drives that you've got uh, not only for their val validity in their smart information but also whether they are in fact genuine but we're going to talk a lot more about the impact of this but there's going to be some of you in the comments very early doors that are going to highlight what refurb renewed refreshed drives that's not new you can get them off the you know you know any kind of retailer right now and you're right you can go onto amazon right now and you can get hold of renewed refurbed or recertified drives just like that but there is a reason i very rarely talk about these drives especially on when we talk about black friday and prime day and that is because some of these drives are donkey's years old indeed if you look at some of the wd i'm sorry um, the seagate iron wolf drives that are listed there at the moment some of them are as old as 2007 or 2018 that's seven or eight years old for a nas drive that your data will sit on and even though amazon are prepared to say yeah we've given it a bit of a test i wouldn't test a drive that has got that much potential hour usage on it and that's what this whole thing is about it's about drives that are being sold as new when in fact they are used and therefore the workload rating is invalid the durability is invalid and therefore the security of your data is potentially invalid now, at the beginning, I did mention there that it's Seagate Exos drives that seem to be largely highlighted there. It's true. Uh, of the 200 individual reports that have been submitted over at Heist, the bulk of them are Seagate Exos drives there. Now, most of this hasn't been recognized by, you know, you know, system admins that double check the smart every single day or go into what is going to be the reliably, the FARM, Field Accessibility Reliability Metric. These are users that receive these drives and happen to check that they were covered in scuffs. They were covered in marks and for new drives, that seemed a bit suspicious. And then they dug in and then found out that the smart information, information SMART, which is a collection of different metrics that measure drive heat, drive usage, and a bunch of other stuff to do with sectors that you can find out about your drives, they noticed that the information being presented there did not match up against the um, uh, condensed information that was provided by the FARM, which looked at all of that smart information and produces a singular report based on that. And therefore, they could see that inconsistency and that the smart information had been edited on these drives. With some drives reporting 15,000 hours utilized and up, as others up to 50,000 hours utilized, that means some drives that were being sold as new had almost six years of usage built into them, which is insane. Now, Seagate themselves have made it abundantly clear that not only do they not authorize this, but they are saying they had no knowledge of this. And moreover, this has happened somewhere in the supply chain and they're investigating it right now. Now, when you buy a drive off the shelf or you buy a drive from your local e-tailer, it's worth highlighting that you are not buying a drive that in most cases were directly supplied to them by Seagate. When you buy a drive, you don't buy it directly from Seagate, you buy it from your local e-tailer. However, the supply chain is multifaceted and Seagate themselves are saying that it has happened somewhere around the second or third stage of that. To put it into perspective, again, this comes from a, more than a boring decade working in e-tail. At the beginning, you have your retail, uh, so you have your brand, your Seagate there at the end. They make the drive there, they may manufacture it in Thailand, in Japan, they might manufacture parts or all of it in the US, but they manufacture the drive 
drive. That gets passed over in bulk to regional distribution centers, RDCs. Now there will be different ones depending on where you are in the world. The RDCs then supply that stock in larger volumes to individual resellers. Resellers and these and wholesale, these then pass those on to your e-commerce website. Sometimes the lines between resellers and e-commerce websites become very, very blurred and OEMs and laptop manufacturers as well as large scale cloud providers, you know, your AWS, your Google and that sort of stuff, they buy right the way from stage one or stage two there. But this has happened with the flooding of these Moody drives at the second and third stage there. And then the resellers and the uh, uh, distributors, the where uh, the wholesalers, they're at that stage three, they are the ones who are the most impacted by this. Now, loads have already been listed. Many of them are already listed on uh, Seagate's own recommended retailers outlet. I've seen no change there, it's still early doors. And depending on the site you may have bought from, if you are based at least in Germany, they are handling those RMAs and those checks slightly differently. Some of them flat out offering immediate replacements, others looking for more investigative materials to be presented before they engage in any kind of RMA system there. But nonetheless, if you're not in Germany, even though I have highlighted, again, part, other parts of Europe, Australia, Japan, have all, and Thailand as well, have been impacted, why should you care if you're sat there in the US going, well, I don't care? <laughs> Firstly, good for you. Uh, secondly, it's worth highlighting that what happens when these drives, Chia was massive, and therefore, these drives are going to be in offloaded very, very quickly and globally in larger scale. And look at it from the perspective of one of those resellers who have received 60 18 tb drives all of them neatly packed and sealed now they don't want to open that stock because if they open that stock they can't sell it as new they'll sell it re resealed it makes it very difficult to sell those drives therefore it's very difficult for them to open the drives and check they have to trust the previous step in the chain to verify that those drives are real Moreover, from that, one look at sites like AliExpress list dozens upon dozens of Seagate Exos drives at wildly irregular prices. Now, some of them are honest enough to highlight that they are X data center, they are from X batches. Later on, when we talk about drive verification, you'll see what I mean by drives that are sold in batches in single systems, but many of them are not listed in that fashion, and these are the drives to be truly suspicious of. But bottom line is the dissemination of these moody drives. Now this has been noticed that should be a concern. It would be easy to look at this and go, well, good on the Germans for highlighting what they found here, sharing this and stopping this before it gets worse. But I would argue that this means these drives are now being halted. They would have, whoever is, you know, and we're going to at least highlight this is going to either be one giant organization or lots of smaller paddocks of Chia farmers that are now disseminating these drives en masse. They're going to be doing it in trickles, doing it all at once, they get noticed, which means Chances are this is going to be a problem that is going to spike up again in the very near future in your region or may already have happened. So let's talk about the ways in which you can verify the health of your drives, the power on of your drives and what you should do. Now, Seagate themselves do highlight that you should utilize their own CTools application. They're available uh, for Windows and Linux. I believe there might be a Mac version on there. No, there's a portable version. And that allows you to pull a lot of the smart information and get, you know, analyzed reports of that information presented to you. Now, there are slight hurdles for that. I'll talk about in just a moment. Otherwise, you can use Smart MON or Smart Mon tools there. Do take advantage at least of version 7.4 because that's the one that has uh, the FAIM aggregate information presented to you. Uh, alternative. If, you, if your drives are in a NAS system, there are ways to retrieve a lot of the SMART and uh, aggregated FA ARM data if you take advantage of command line tools uh, uh, via something called SSH that we'll talk about in a moment and take advantage of a client tool like PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y, or you can even use uh, Windows PowerShell as well. Uh, but all of these have varying degrees of utility to your and your personal setup, whether you have one drive or 24 of these drives. So let's talk about the execution of these. Now, double checking the power on of the drives that you've got inside your system to verify that they are indeed new or the drives that you do have been using for, say, a year or so weren't missold to you is actually a lot harder than you might think. CTools, for example, is one of the ones that Seagate keep highlighting, but unfortunately, when you go to the download section, it becomes abundantly clear that, of course, of course there is a desktop client application. Most of the drives we've been talking about are in larger batches in either customized Linux arrays or utilizing uh, first-party NAS software that arrives 
survive with the NAS in question, Synology, QNAP, etc. So therefore, utilizing some of these tools can be problematic. For example, here I've got C tools here, and according to this, the only drive I've got listed here is that SSD, my OS SSD. However, when I open up Crystal Disk, there is a 12 TB drive that I've got connected via a Sabrent USB docking station. There is the power on hours at 489 and the rest of the smart data. So C tools there, if you want to go into the advanced settings and you can go ahead and change some of these settings here, it's not really going to be all encompassing and useful. And from here you go into the command line. Talking for example about Smart Mon tools, the tool that they were recommended in the original Heist uh, news reports there, or taking advantage of something like Putty to remote access your NAS. Now, the reason people use things like Smart Mon tools is they want to get access to that FARM data because unlike Smart Data, which in this case during these dubious drives has been altered, the FARM data is an analgum of all the available data there and provides a much more three-dimensional report. And luckily it means that when utilizing this application, even if you do use the desktop client or you utilize the application in Linux and general command line, it can be beneficial. So for example, I'm running this, make sure you're running in administrator, and this is utilizing that local drive, that USB one, and this gives me the general information of SMART. But keep in mind, uh, via a USB dock, some um, smart data is actually inaccessible. However, utilizing this tool, we can dig down and get the full drive report there of FARM. Again, I am using a sort of localized VM here that we're accessing, hence that activate window stuff. But from here, you can get a great deal more information about the health of the drive and a, an overall report. And that details a great deal more accurately the power on hours, as you can see there. And with that, a larger scale of information about the drive to verify that information. And, you know, you've got some options here. If you are more technical or you have a system admin, they can understand a lot more of this information for you or simply take this information and feed it into your local LLM of choice. And more than likely, even your Google Gemini's and more will allow you to create a customized report based on this information. Case in point, and I know it's not for everyone, if you take this information, bring it up to the top there, well, this is our command line we've entered into the system, go into Google Gemini and put um, assess my HDD, paste that information in, and it will monitor that information and give you all of it based on that report you provided. This is an extra step for those that don't have a system admin or those that don't understand a lot of the information that's provided to you, but this at the very least will verify a lot of the information about the drive and allow you to take advantage of the FARM data that's been presented by that tool and find out how legitimate your drive is. Now, there are going to be those of you that say, if I'm already running a NAS, what about the NAS's inbuilt tools? And you're right, look at this Synology here. We could go into the storage manager, go into the individual listed disks. I've got SSDs in here, so smart retrieval data will differ ever so slightly. But when we look at the health info, info here, we can go into smart. And from there, you'll be able to do a quick diagnostic check. But it doesn't really give you a vast amount of information. I will talk about a specified command later on there. But what is recommended if you are using a NAS system is once again to go into the command line now. Make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, go into the command uh, session there and you will have to enable SSH temporarily. So do remember to turn this off after you are done. And that is where that lovely little tool, Putty, that we talked about earlier on comes in. Once you've got Putty installed, as you can see here, I'll go ahead and get Putty up and running. Make sure you always run it as an administrator because just in case you encounter any problems along the way there. Next up, make sure you use the IP in question. Uh, so in this case, 192.168.0 and then I believe it was 5.9 so put in 5.9 from there it will open up snap it onto the side of the screen there enter your login credentials don't be surprised if when you're typing the password it doesn't appear there on screen first command we need to get information about the listed disks you can see a bunch of drives here it's telling us everything that's on the system now I want to dig into SATA 1, that first drive there, so we utilize this command here. Again, all of the commands that we talk about today are listed in the description below. Uh, we enter that password once again, and this gives us a bit more detailed information about that smart data. But as described earlier on, when we are looking at smart versus that FARM data, smart gives us incremental details, which on these drives has been modified slash has been dubiously changed. And we need that aggregate information there to pull the real world uh, kind of report of all of that. Here's how to do it on the NAS. We use this brand new command here. And again, what this does is pull down specifically more information detailed into each of those smart reports, and then we aggregate it. 
And this aggregation takes advantage of something called GER, uh, GREP, I should say. And this aggregates that information to give us the real world power on hours for what's inside that drive. Now, again, depending on your NAS brand of choice, specified commands will differ. And last thing, it's worth highlighting that even though we are looking at power on hours and seeing the legitimacy of the drives that we're utilising, I hate seagulls, um, then I would recommend just real quickly after doing all of this, just double checking that your drives are in fact legitimate. You'll be surprised how many of those moody drives on AliExpress are just, you know, Mac store drives that have been labelled up to be Exos and more. Now the way to do this, once again, take advantage of the serial number and if you don't want to pull the drives, make sure you use something locally such as this crystal disk by default. Normally the serial number won't be shown. Go into the edit function and then show the serial number. Take that serial number, go to Seagate's own website and double check that drive. You'll be able to check the warranty of the drive. Now, chances are, as you can see, this drive is out of warranty. But as you can see, this drive even though it's out of warranty, is legitimate. And that's really what we're looking at here. We want to know that the drive is real. And as you can see, this drive I've got here was sold originally as part of a larger system. This was part of an 8-bay system that I received. Now, what's interesting is if you see this message on a singular drive you've purchased, this is a note of concern. Yes, it means it's a real drive, but at the same time, it means it is a drive that was part of a larger system ergo it's not new so do take note of something like this and of course most of this stuff you're already going to know if a driver's got scuffs or marks on it which showed it was physically used now bottom line long term i don't think seagate's largely at fault for this they sold a lot of drives during that chia wave and realistically both wd as well toshiba and other drive manufacturers made an absolute killing selling larger capacity hard drives this isn't about the durability of those drives it isn't about the reliability of those drives this is about that supply chain that we talked about and how these drives have entered that supply chain again i can't stress this enough don't come away from this video if you're not using exos drives and if you're not based in germany or some that are bought from the retailers affected and go meh who cares i don't need to check check your data check no, check your smart data right now against that farm and use the tools that i've highlighted and the command lines that are in the description below eddie over and that compares this detail to more and we've added a, a link to an article that i'm working on right now that will hopefully be live at the same time as this it might be one of those work in progress runs where i'll add variable commands and tools that you can use for each individual nas brand and platform that are appropriate to you and your setup because i know most of you watching this video are going to be NAS users, so you need uh, tailored tools to your own OS uh, NAS based experience there. Do keep in mind that the way drives are laid out and their naming conventions will differ from manufacturer to manufacturer, and therefore, one command line that lists drives as uh, their individual DEVs or devs won't be the same as another. So it's important to make sure the commands you use are appropriate to your own platform. But I hope you found this video useful. Uh, do let me know if you have been impacted by this or if you can think of another way that I've not highlighted in this video, you can verify realistically and accurately the power on inside your drives. Again, if you've bought drives today, you, you get drives in the next month or two, check them for scratches, check them for scuffs. That's an early sign that these have come out of large scale servers. Man alive, what a start to the year. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.